Okay, let's take a look at uh, just some characteristics of the system or uh, system behavior. Um, and we'll primarily talk about the behavior of the system uh, with regard to um, the, its characteristic modes. Um, one way to characterize a system is by what's known as the, the system time constant. Uh, this gives us some idea of how fast a system can respond to uh, a changing input. Um, in general, an impulse response may look something like this. Not a very clearly defined pulse type shape um, with a, a peak value that occurs at some time t0 and a corresponding peak value of ht0. Um, we'll define the pulse time constant as the width of an equivalent system that has the same maximum value and whose area is the same as the area under the original impulse response. So again, this is this is the original h of t, and we're defining um, our uh, system time constant th here as uh, defining the the width of a pulse of a rectangular pulse that uh, will give us the same area as the original impulse response. So mathematically this is th is we can get the the total area of the impulse response it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of h of t dt that would give us the area under this curve the area of our pulse is h t zero th so if we divide by uh, h t zero we'll get the desired width of this uh, system, of this equivalent system, and so we define this th as being the uh, system time constant. Um, a, a couple of special cases, if h of t is just a sum of simple modes, let's say n simple modes, all discrete all roots lying in the left half plane in this case then th is just a weighted sum of all of the time constants um, the time constants here are the reciprocals of the um, uh, characteristic roots and so th for this case turns out then to be the sum from k equal 1 to n of a k over lambda k divided by the sum of the, a, the mode amplitudes, the a k values. Um, in the special case where the impulse response just has a, a single, consists of a single mode term, n equal one case, then th is equal to one over lambda, the time, the time constant of that single mode. Okay. Rise time. gives us an idea of how quickly a, a system can um, respond to a change in an input and so it's usually specified in terms of the application of a, of a unit step so here we'll let our input be a unit step function and we'll characterize our system by this rectangular 
response with its equivalent uh, time constant. So this is our h of t function. Of course, to determine the output, we need to convolve these two signals. And in this case, the output will look something like this. We'll start at 0, and then it, it takes a time th seconds for um, this pulse as we time reverse it and slide it through. It will take its th seconds for it to be completely overlapped by x of t, and then the output then would be constant for all t greater than th. So we can see from this that the time it takes, we've got an instantaneous change in the input. The time it takes for the output to change from the starting level to its final level is actually equal to uh, the system time constant. So the rise time, TR here, is equal to our system time constant. Um, another related concept is uh, we can think of these systems as being filters. Um, uh, each with a, a corresponding uh, bandwidth and we can show that for um, these low pass systems that we've been working with that the bandwidth of the corresponding low pass filter is approximately equal to 1 over the corresponding system time constant. Um, and this is a pretty good approximation. Um, we can show that when we transmit a pulse through a system with system time constant th, so I've got a, uh, an input pulse with width tx and I transmit this through so this is my x of t I transmit this through a system with impulse response of width th um, again I can determine the output we know that the output will look something like this But the width of the output, ty, is equal to the sum of the widths of the input pulse and the width of my impulse response, uh, th here. So uh, the, the output pulse is wider than the input pulse by the time constant of of our system. Um, this becomes important when we're transmitting square waves of information down a, down a channel or, or through a, a system with a particular impulse response. Um, in order to, because of this pulse dispersion, the output pulses will be wider than the input pulses and um, to avoid, the, they'll tend to interfere with each other. To avoid that interference due to dispersion, uh, we require that the, the pulse rate, the rate at which we're transmitting pulses down the channel should be less than 1 over our system time constant. So. Uh, again, if our, our time constant here is, let's say, uh, a millisecond, one over that would be a thousand or a thousand hertz. So in order to avoid intersymbol interference, again, as a general rule of thumb, we need to make sure that we're transmitting fewer than a thousand pulses per second uh, down through this particular system. Or in terms of uh, the bandwidth of our system, equivalently, we could say that have to keep the information rate 
less than FC.